Hmm. Hello. Recording. Well, we're going to have Meg. Oh, here we go. How you doing? I'm well. How are you? Let's see. Hold on. Thanks for joining. You bet. Thanks for uh, setting it up. <laughs> Sorry it took so long. It feels like the weeks are just, they're, they were used to jogging. Now they're sprinting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you've had a lot going on, apparently. Starting a new uh, new job and everything. A, that uh, A new job. And um, the opposite field, I think, of yours. I have to write very short little copy. <laughs> there are advantages to that. <laughs> there are, yeah. <laughs> Keep a lot of ammunition in, in, in the weapon for sure. But first, first thing is thanks again for taking the time. Uh, I haven't read a, I haven't sat down and gotten lost in a book in a long time before I picked up heat two. And, oh. and as you, if you've been, if you've been paying attention to my rambling on Twitter, I'm a big ad adoring fan of the film and for Michael to just say, Hey, let's pop the hood again on this baby decades later. And then, and to bring you in who, it, you're like a, you're kind of like an Obi Wan in the crime reporting writing world. So, I thought this was a great partnership, and so thanks for really for doing the interview. But thanks for, you know, being the partner in crime with Michael Mann to create this amazing novel. Well, thank you for saying that. It's a, it's an amazing opportunity for me. It's, a, you know, I've been a fan of Michael Mann's work forever. And uh, Heat is one of my favorite movies. It's definitely, I think, the best heist movie of all time, Crime Saga. And <laughs> to find out that he not only wanted to uh, continue the story that he had been uh, thinking about this for so long, but that he was looking for a novelist to collaborate with him and uh, uh, was interested in talking to me was uh, a huge honor. and equal responsibility i felt <laughs> yeah and see this is how wisely we're connected is that was my first question how did the the paths cross with michael and it, apparently he uh tracked you down <laughs> he did well we we share a literary agent and uh who knew that he was interested in collaborating um on on a novel i mean he's an extraordinarily accomplished writer obviously uh <laughs> has been for decades all his work had been in film and television and he's uh was uh, uh aware that he's uh moving into a different arena and uh <laughs> so uh he was uh, interested in talking to a novelist who's used to writing stories that you know 400 pages on the in in prose form so uh i was uh really lucky that it worked out because it was a fantastic partnership i cannot tell you how exciting how <laughs> wonderful how elevating it was to okay. uh, to get a chance to just like dive deep for so long <laughs> into the world of heat it was uh it was a real privilege yeah and really it, it must have been a thrill to have this accomplished writer director and in this kind of collaboration you're the more experienced one in the field and then you have this guy and Michael Mann coming up and you, you have to almost show him the ropes a little bit. It's almost like he's riding a different kind of horse. <laughs> we were we were uh, we were throwing ropes at each other and catching them and trying to <laughs> leap at him, both of us for for a while, because uh, um, I. Uh, I had to to get up to speed with his how <laughs> incredibly in depth he knew his, these characters and where they had come from and where he wanted them to go, and uh, how he saw the story unfolding. And uh, he was uh, you'll be unsurprised to hear that he is an extraordinarily quick study as far as the, <laughs> I imagine. Uh, what's the difference between writing a novel and writing a screenplay, and how do you how do you pace it and how do you uh, set up scenes? Uh, because uh, all the dramatic, you know, turning points are the oh, same, yeah. whether you're writing for a television or prose or uh, who knows, writing uh, graphic novels or audiobooks or whatever. Oh, yeah, for sure. And and you got to think, I mean, you're right. His movies have always been known for being so intricate and so detailed. I mean, 
not just the lives of the maybe the protagonist, the the cops or the FBI agents, but also the the other side. And the what it, what I loved about Heat and also Heat too is that he put a couple people on different sides of the law who looked who looked and acted very similar. I always thought that was his great dichotomy trick with Heat in 95 in, in an era where you had Arnold and Sly. You knew who, who was going to win in the end. And this one, you didn't really know who to root for. And I found that same trick in Heat too. Well, thank you. It's... Um... Heat, the, the film, I'm presuming we're talking to people who uh, have an idea of, uh, of what Heat's about, and we're not oh, spoiling yeah. anything to say it is oh, uh, no. a crime saga. And the thing about Heat is that you have a cop, Vincent Hanna, playing by Al Pacino, and a robber, uh, Neil McCauley, played by Robert De Niro, and um, they're both protagonists in the story. Yeah. There's not a protagonist and antagonist you have twin protagonists on opposite sides of the law and when we are with hannah and his lepd robbery homicide team who are hunting this crew that is taking down um, very high scale Mm -hmm. violent scores we are all in on them catching these people finding out who they are you know getting getting to them when we're with neil and his crew including chris Hurlis, played by val kilmer yeah. uh trejo played by danny trejo um so good Charito, <laughs> we we were like yeah yeah get away with it get away with it a little danny trejo goes a long way manager around a little bit of danny and that was the thing about the movie and especially in, in the sequel when i was reading he too all the this it's an ensemble effort it's like you just you feel like you're less in a movie than you're just really following a bunch of crazy people around these little adventures that don't really seem like adventures that they seem like real life fast forward you know sped up well you pointed out that michael uh is uh very big on accuracy yeah. and uh he's legendary for wanting to research um the world of the that the characters come from and live in so uh that that legend's accurate by the way the research that oh, he yeah. does <laughs> and that we did for he too was um uh was in was nothing like i'd ever done before for any of the novels other novels i'd written but he wants to know what makes a crew run what is it that uh that drives uh people who carry out the scores uh where are they uh uh, the most excited, where are they the most scared during uh, during a heist? What is it that they watch out for? What is it that uh, that holds them together? And uh, to to get a real sense of, uh, of 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 how they feel, we did speak at length to uh, to a bank robber and uh, find out <laughs> to get a get a sense of personal history. I will say, a retired bank robber, <laughs> someone who had uh, they used um, to be in the game. Yes, paid their debt to society uh, and was, um, you know, really helpful. Very, very helpful for us. Uh, There's a tunnel heist in the in the novel. And, you know, I've never done anything more in a bank than, you know, endorse a check. But, hey, I'm your woman if you need it. (laughs) You got those. You got those ears now to go, okay, all this could happen. (laughs) Right. If you need to know, if you need to know a few things, just hit me up. Yeah. But. And, and also, I thought that man, the heart will, is racing in this novel. When I and there's certain parts, and I'll, I'll say there's new characters for people that haven't read the book. There's characters you'll kind of meet for the first time, but I love that they reminded me of somebody who maybe been walking around the world of the movie, and how they just showed up in this sequel. But there are two times, Meg, where genuine, my heart was like, "Whoa, I don't know what's going to happen next. Is this character going to live or die?" And it's, it, I mean. Reading that, I, I felt almost a movie coming alive, and I think I'd be crazy to think. Do you think, from your end, do you think there'll be an adaptation of this novel, or do you think, even as it is, which is an outstanding novel, do you think it'll remain that? I cannot say one way or the other. Uh, <laughs> but we are talking about Michael Mann, who, yeah. who, uh, who certainly has said that he uh he sees this uh, as a movie as well as a novel so oh yeah so we'll see uh, what uh, how he uh, how he goes forward with that well just just if you ever just tell him just tell him there's a guy named 
Bernthal who could really play one of these guys <laughs> because the, the thing I did when I read the novel was my movie brain just started putting things together being a movie fan yourself when you write your novels do you think as the character is his people when you're writing them or do you just are you trying to create just an awesome character to read how does that come together in your writing process you mean, I mean, that's a great question. And uh, I certainly hope that by the end of a novel, ideally by the beginning, yeah. <laughs> that, the, that the characters feel like like real three-dimensional people, yeah. human beings. Uh, I know some writers like to have like a, a vision board and they put up, uh, you know, photos of uh, oh. actors that they're picturing for, for the characters. I generally don't do that, uh, but, uh, but I definitely picture the, the all these people in my head uh, for for all my other novels and uh, with heat too of course I had uh, some little blueprint extremely particular uh, <laughs> visions to draw upon because we have the indelible performances from from the film and uh, that was where I felt a responsibility to uh, to honor what uh, what they had brought to the characters, and to figure out how to uh, how to how to expand on it while remaining true to everything that uh, that Michael had uh, and the actors had created. But it was oh, a sure. wonderful wonderful template, and uh, having having De Niro and Val Kilmer, yeah, in your head, and, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but well, what was your favorite part of? I guess a two part question. What was your favorite part to write? Like, what did you just write? I know there's sometimes we write stuff where it's like, man, I think I did that really good. But what was the, I mean, without spoiling anything, of course, I mean, let's just say people listening, re watching, there will be some gunplay, some very <laughs> loud voices, a very commanding character. But what was your favorite part to really write that you felt, man, that was, that was, I, I, I hit that through the hoop. What was the most fun and exciting? I would, uh, I would say, and it's not a spoiler, I would say that I I really loved writing the Stash House takedown oh, that, gosh, that's that a takes good place uh, across the U.S.-Mexican border in Mexicali. And again, when Michael came to me, he had the concept for the, the novel really strong you know, already strongly in mind that it would be a prequel and a sequel that it that would jump back and forth in time. Amazing concept. Dual, dual timelines, uh, that uh, that there would be a, that the tunnel heist would, would lead on to something bigger uh, in the prequel section. And uh, that's when I realized that uh, not only had I always wanted to write a heist novel, but that I was getting to write a heist novel with <laughs> someone who had come up with uh, such an incredible uh, dramatic concept. And uh, uh, we talked it all out. We hashed out everything we, you know, outline and, and character arcs and, you know, the drama and how to put it all together. But then we had to, to actually write it and getting, uh, letting Michael say, take, you know, you know, have at it. For, yeah, at uh, it. some of that section <laughs> you know, every, by the, yeah i will say by the eventually we both went over every single word in the novel and it, it was passed back and forth you know a dozen two dozen three dozen times so that so that it's yeah. hard to tell who wrote what anymore it's all really ex that's extremely great. collaborative bit but getting a chance to to uh, say okay i will uh, uh i see what you want to do here let me, <laughs> let me let me take a crack at this take a big swing <laughs> uh -huh. But what was your favorite part to read after the thing was done and finalized when you went back to it? What was your favorite part that you were like, oh, man, this is this read so well? It, it changes day by day. And I hope that I, <laughs> every word is precious. Every, every, word, is, word, every is, word is yours. <laughs> yeah. I try not to reread too much anything that I read because that's the way to make sure it gets stale immediately. <laughs> It is. You, you can. I, I always find myself nitpicking everything I read. And this could be just yesterday. I'm like, ah, oh, you can have slashed three paragraphs. So I just kind of usually right. avoid it unless I see an error, then it's got to be fixed. But, um, you know, your writing is always connected to this world of crime. Um, what, what what drew you into that world as a writer? Like, what was that part? You're like, man, I want to write more stories about this world, about you know, nefarious characters and good characters, but somehow they're both the same kind of person. You know, I, what drew you into that world in the first place as a writer? Uh, I came to it first as a reader. 
that uh, I, from, from the time I was, I guess, in, in high school, I was just a huge fan of thrillers, of uh, suspense novels, mysteries, uh, where, where ideally you're, you're reading a big story where the stakes are life and death, yeah. where uh, the stakes are chaos versus justice of some kind, where people have to to dig deep and are challenged to their core, to uh, to to find their their courage, to find their values, to stand up for something or to fail at it, and uh, to um, to 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 leap into action eventually, even if reluctantly, uh, and end up with their backs against the wall, fighting for something that they 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 care deeply about. Um, under uh, you know under threat of death perhaps uh, with time running out i mean what's uh, that's that's why i love crime and thrillers that it it, uh, it shows us big emotions and people uh, really uh, really reaching their their heights and their depths of humanity and uh, that's what i that's what i love to read that's why i love to write it uh, i love to make sure that readers hearts are uh, left racing that you um that you're on the edge of your seat. You can't turn the pages fast enough. That uh, oh, yeah. you'll you'll laugh, you'll cry, you'll bite your fingernails, and uh, hopefully come out uh, <laughs> with taking a deep breath and saying, "Yeah, give me more of that." <laughs> yeah, I mean, and I think that it brought back a lot of the emotions of the film. Is you know, watching watching Neil, who usually lived his life by a certain code, we get to find out how that code was created, and and I think that was kind of a thrill. And then. It was when I watched the movie again after reading the novel, the movie played a little bit differently. Oh. It's like because one of my thrills of reading the book was what if they kill off Vincent? So the whole movie, the whole book, I was like, oh man, I don't know. And it's just because of how rich those characters were, but how rich you kept them in the book to where when I watched the movie again, it's like, okay, now I've I've lived I've lived a few days in this character's shoes. Mm -hmm. And did your experience watching the movie after you wrote it, did it change for you from before when you just watched it? Well, inevitably. Um, and I think it's really important that the, that the movie exists, uh, existed first. Uh, yeah. that because, you, and it doesn't matter whether you watch the movie first or read the book first. Uh, you can, you can do it either way. Agreed. But, uh, once I knew we were going to write a prequel, that means you, as an as an author, I think you have a responsibility to add something um, surprising and true to uh, a viewers or a readers' understanding of of, of what's to come. Uh, that you have to learn how to do the suspense. You have to you you can play around with what people know is is ahead and create dread or excitement. Yeah, um, that's why I thought. Uh, uh, Better Call Saul worked so brilliantly in many ways, uh, yes. apart from Breaking Bad. But you can watch them in order. You can watch them tr chronologically if you wish. But but the prequel is um, is much richer if you've already seen uh, if you've seen what comes after. Yeah, a little so, context. Yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah, it, it feels like it, and those worlds could almost be really, really connected. I, I got a little bit of when I was reading that that like the heist scene in in the in the, in the novel and the sequel novel. He too. I got a lot. I thought, man, maybe they'll bump into some Better Call Saul characters here too. I thought maybe you know Neil might run into you know Jimmy. You know, you never know. It'd be kind of a good crossover. You know, if, if you didn't have to run into a guy named Vincent Hanna. I mean, but I, I think it makes. Gosh, it made me really yearn for more. I think the, if anybody's read Heat Two, I think the final scene is just a, a great like keep that door open a little bit because there's still characters around and I love how it gives you that potential for more. Are you sitting around these days waiting for Michael to go, okay, let's do heat three. <laughs> You're ready. Are you ready? <laughs> All I can say is that I, I, it was a thrill and a, an <laughs> honor to write this book. Um, I certainly didn't think the characters were done, but um I, I I know nothing. Yeah, I mean, because it was crazy. I'm and whenever I I want I read I read the book, I just see John Boyd in in that character. I mean, as you know, as, as speaking in that character, and I, I will say this before before I start to kind of wrap this up, as I can ramble on. As you know, my newsletter is called Ramble On. I just keep going, but 
I thought one of the emo most emotional parts of the book was when, and I, I, I'm i losing, what was John Voight, his character's name, I, it, it's eluding me, but. John but he, Voight's character. Yes. In the, Nate. Yeah, Nate, when Nate was trying to tell Chris what happened to Neil, I, I thought that was some just really incredible writing. And I, I love how the book picked up right after the novel. It felt like a sequel. It felt like I was reading an early, early, early script. It felt like I was being let be in the back door to go, this is what could happen. Mm -hmm. And I thought that that scene was really well done because if you watch the movie, you think, well, Val Kilmer's character killed Pacino's best friend and partner. And in the end, you know, Al Vincent Hanna took away Chris's best friend. And I thought, mm -hmm. I don't know, I thought that was really well done. So, but man, thank you so much for taking this time. Uh, that's all I really had. I didn't really just wanted to talk heat too with you, kind of like just kick around to this wonderful world that I've, I'm, I'm just very glad found expansion in 2022. I mean, I think after the pandemic, I think we all need a little more heat, <laughs> and, you know, and let, let, let me ask this, are, are you, has there been any way, do you think Michael Mann will ever show, has he given the novel to Al and Robert just to read? Um, I don't know. <laughs> that could be the most interesting question. What do you think? Don't let, don't get Al all worked up though. <laughs> no, I, I have, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not read into that. So who knows? <laughs> but um, do you do, uh, well, tell me, what are you writing at the moment? Would tell anybody watching this, uh, what are you preparing? What's out there? Where can we read uh, you next? I am uh, editing the fourth novel in my unsub series about uh, a female FBI agent who hunts serial predators, and that will be out in 2023. And uh, then continuing to seek to 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 write thrills <laughs> and keep uh, keep readers up late at night and feel like they're uh, on a roller coaster. <laughs> so. Yeah. Has, has, has there ever been any inkling to you ever to write a script or do you just find that a comfortable, you know, really... That, that highway of novel creating or have you ever thought about doing a, a script or no sure i mean uh i i love writing novels i've i've trained yeah. myself over many years how to write novels but <laughs> you're uh, very good at it scripts scripts look seem uh, like uh uh they might be an interesting uh an interesting ride to take so who knows uh, i had never collaborated on a novel before and i and i just did on this one so i'm uh, i'm up for new things it seems like as writers, it's just the next adventure is usually unknown, and that's the best thing about it. But oh, yeah. I know whatever you keep doing, Meg, I'll be I'll be uh, reading. I'm I'm glad we we follow each other on Twitter again. I'm 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 going to reread Heat too, and maybe when my kid gets to be older, I can get him to dive into the world of Heat. But uh, great job on it. I appreciate taking the time. I'll put this out on, on the old internet. And we'll uh, maybe collaborate down the road. Maybe reconnect. Until then. Great. Uh, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Thanks, Dan. Right. See you. Okay. All righty. Bye.